Hi, and welcome back to Scotty's Info. I'm Scotty with my co-host Cletus. And today I'm going to talk about USB 3. So the deal with USB is that uh, way back in the day, in the, uh, I think it was 1996 or something like that, uh, USB 1.0 was released. And USB 1 had a maximum data transfer rate of 1.5 megabits per second, which worked out to something like 180k, 180 kilobytes per second, except there was overhead, so it was really, really slow. And no one cared. And then USB 1.1 came out, and that had a maximum transfer rate of 12 megabits per second, which practically was actually more like, because of the overhead of the serial protocol it uses, and the bus contention, and all this other nonsense, uh, the maximum transfer rate for USB 1.1 was 1 megabyte per second. That was still pretty slow. But then USB 2.0 was released, and that's when it really became popular, because with USB 2, the maximum transfer rate is, uh, um, the, the throughput is 480 megabits per second, which practically, it's like 200, it's like 280 megabits per second, again, due to the overhead. So you actually get, with USB 2, you get an actual real, like, file transfer data rate of about 35 megabytes per second. And with USB 2, um, that's when USB really sort of became super popular for USB sticks and external hard drives and, like, all kinds of peripherals, keyboards, mice, everything. That all began with USB 2, except for things like external drives or USB sticks, copying at 35 megabytes per second, practically, uh, was kind of slow. So, in the not-too-distant past, USB 3.0 was released. And USB 3 um, has a, a maximum transfer rate of 5 gigabits per second. Now, practically speaking, that actually works out to about 400 megabytes per second uh, copy speed, which is really fast, because if, say, you have an SSD in your computer, you know that, for example, if you have, like, a Samsung whatever, EVO 850 or something, uh, I think they, the read speed is somewhere, it peaks at like 550 megabytes per second. So you're talking, you know, USB 3, you're talking like SSD type data transfer, real, real world copy speeds, which is pretty cool, right? The thing I really wanted to talk about is USB 3, because what you've probably noticed is you have, say, a laptop or a desktop, and you have USB 3 ports. Now the way to tell the difference is that USB 3 ports are actually blue instead of black. USB 2 ports are typically black. USB 3, they color them blue so that you can differentiate them most of the time. Some laptops, it'll just say, uh, it'll just look like a black USB port and they put like a little SS for super speed uh, printed on the, the casing of the laptop, basically. But the problem is, like me, you have probably found that when you buy, say, a super fancy USB 3.0 stick that has, like, mega high transfer rates and you plug it in, you don't actually get anywhere near 400 megabytes per second. But you should because the USB stick supports it, right? So what the heck is going on? Okie dokie. So, first of all, this, that is what a USB 3, that's the, that's the male end, of course, but you can see it's colored blue, and that's how you know it's USB 3, right? Uh, this is a USB-C connector, which, as you may notice, is reversible. And this is, this USB 3 type C connector is the newfangled one that's probably eventually going to replace this kind. And this is kind of the future, because I, th I believe it's only with this type of USB type C cable that you'll get the maximum uh, 20 gigabit or 20 gigabits per second transfer rate, uh, but that's that's yet to come because they just announced it. Anyway, so let's say you have something like this dude. Now this is a a Lexar LP. What is it? It's an LP20. Uh, it's a 128 gigabyte USB stick, and as you may notice, uh, it's USB 3, right? So you take this guy and you plug him in to your computer um, and you're, you, know, you buy this and they say, you know, 128 gigabytes, 
maximum transfer rate for this guy is uh, read is up to 400 megabytes per second. Um, and of course, 400 megabytes per second is that maxes out the USB 3.0 spec, right? So this guy is supposed to read at 400 megs per second and write at about 270 megs per second, which means this little guy is basically like a 128 gig SSD in your pocket, which is cool, right? But you plug it in and you get maybe like 41 megabytes per second. Similarly, I have this guy, which is, uh, I don't think they even sell these anymore. This is a one of the very first USB, you can see it's written on here, USB 3.0 Express Duo 16 gig. This is one of the very first USB 3 sticks that came out. And uh, he gave, I think, something like 80, 80 megabytes per second. Like I say, he's pretty old. So I, whoops, I take these two guys and I plug them into my computer and I'm not getting anywhere near 400 megabytes per second. And for this guy, I'm not getting 80, I'm getting like 41 megabytes per second. So what's the deal? Well, it turns out um, that here I have a motherboard and on the back of the motherboard, you can see we have USB 2.0 ports and we have USB 3.0 ports because these are blue, right? So what I do is I take my USB stick and I plug this guy in the back of my motherboard. And what happens? Well, suddenly I get much, much higher transfer rates. I actually get, I can plug this guy in and I actually get close to 400 megabytes per second read and close to 270 right. But if I plug it in the USB port in the front of my computer, I get crap, right? Okay, the reason for that is because these ports on the back of the motherboard are connected to the chipset, in this case an Intel chipset, and those work very, very well. But the ports on the front of my computer are actually connected via something like this. This is a special USB 3 motherboard header, and this guy is just like a three and a half inch drive bay. Sometimes instead of this guy you have just like a bracket that you put in the back of your machine, and you, but they all have one of these, which is the... There we go! That's the USB 3 header connector. For your motherboard and you notice right about here we have this little guy which is for USB 3 right so if I plug one of these dudes in as I did of course I plug this guy in I've got these USB 3 ports on the front of my case and that's where I'm plugging this guy in and I'm not getting transfer fast transfer rates the reason is basically because on the motherboard as I said the USB 3 ports in the back run off the Intel chipset these headers typically are being run off an, a little add-on chip on the motherboard. It's not part of the integrated chipset. It'll be like an AS Media, AS Media, I don't know how you say it. Uh, it's, it's basically it's an add-on chip. So in order to give, you know, the, the Intel chipset allows you to have so many uh, USB 3 ports. And so to give more ports, they add a little extra USB controller on the motherboard. And that's what gives you, say, your your front panel, or your rear panel, your extra blue USB 3 ports, right? Right. So the problem is that those little add-in chips, usually they have drivers, right? Now you'd think that what I would do is I would go to my motherboard manufacturer's website and I would say, give me the latest USB 3 driver for this, this chip or whatever it is, the Asmedia, whatever. I install it and and it doesn't work. I still only get 41 megabytes per second. So then I go, hmm, this is odd. And then I remember that it was actually working before, but it isn't anymore. And then I remembered that uh, it started right about the time of the Windows uh, Creators Update. Not the Fall Creators Update that will be out soon, but the previous one. So I decided to uninstall the USB 3 driver from the motherboard manufacturer and install it, reinstall it. That doesn't work. So then I look for the actual chip number itself, and I go and I try to find like a non, uh, I have an Asus motherboard, so I try to find a non-Asus driver, just give me the pure driver for that, for that little USB chip that's on my motherboard, and I try that. That doesn't work either. But the solution to this problem is quite simple. What you do is you don't use these from this header. You plug your thing directly into there. That uses the Intel chipset. 
uh, every time I have seen this problem, that has worked for me. Except that's not very convenient because, of course, this is the back of your computer case, right? So what do you do? What you do is you get a USB hub like this guy. Uh, that's basically what I did. Uh, you've got your little, your little micro B USB 3 focusing. There we go. Your little funky flat USB. Oh, difficulty. That little thing in the back, that plugs into your, your USB 3 port in the back here, and you end up with all these wonderful USB 3 ports on your desktop. And now, when I take this guy and I plug him in here, ta-da, I get about 400 megabytes per second read and about 270 megabytes per second write. So, that, so that is the deal. Basically, your front ports and any add-in ports, like if you have one of these little brackets or something, if you're using this header, it's possible it's on the Intel chipset, but it's probably more likely that it's that's kind of an add-on chip, and there, there are problems with drivers uh, far more frequently than you might think. Uh, I've seen this issue a lot when you know trying to use USB sticks on various people's computers, and I'm going, geez, why is it copying so slow? And I always take it out of the front port, stick it in the back directly to the motherboard, and boom, I get the full speed. Right, so that's the story. Uh, this is actually kind of a long-running issue with, with USB. It kind of started with USB 3, because back in the early days of USB 3.0, it was released. And if I remember correctly, I think it was Intel was kind of uh, spearheading the standard, or they released it or something. Uh, but the only thing that was available was like a beta of the the actual standard. And Intel sort of kept the standard to themselves, from what I read anyway. And all these manufacturers started producing USB 3 devices and things like things like hubs. But it was based on the non-final USB 3 standard. And that was, it was at that time why I had so many problems with my little super talent, one of the very first USB 3 sticks that came out because it was never working, because nobody could get drivers right. Obviously now USB 3.0 has been around for a long time, and we're already on USB 3.1 and soon 3.2. Um, so there have been several iterations of USB 3.0 devices. There's finally a standard, blah, blah, blah. But clearly there are still issues with the integrated, uh, <coughs> or rather there are, there are far fewer issues with integrated USB 3.0, like USB 3.0 integrated on the Intel chipset. But clearly there are still issues with the sort of add-on USB chips that motherboard manufacturers stick on their motherboards. Um, that's not true in every case, but I've seen it a lot. And the solution in every single case has been either plug your USB 3.0 gizmo directly into the USB 3.0 ports in the back, or get a hub. Um, I'll put links to all this crap in the in the description so you can buy stuff. This is a, it's actually a pretty good hub. It's a TP-Link, which you might think would be kind of crappy, but actually I like it a lot. So anyway, I'll put links down below. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, throw them in the comments down below. Um, for more Techie Tipsy, Scotty's Tech.info. Thanks for watching. See you next time.